Hi guys, welcome back to Little Piece of Heaven Farm. I'm Cheryl, if you're new here. And today, I'm gonna take you guys back on, I believe it's five different casseroles that I've done. And these also can be made ahead of time and, uh, and put into your freezer as a freezer mill. Um, they hold up pretty good, and uh, they're my top five uh, recipes that I have. Anyway, uh, let's get into this, and all you new people, welcome. All you regular subscribers that come back and see me week after week, day after day. I love you guys. I appreciate it. Anyway, let's get into this video. Welcome to Little Piece of Heaven Farm. I'm Cheryl and today we're in the kitchen and we're going to make my version of cheeseburger casserole. Um, right now I have about a pound and a half of ground beef brownie and I'm going to brown that all up. And this recipe is kind of simple. Um, it's not too complicated. Um, just brown this up a little bit. Get it going. And I'm going to add some of this Weber steak and chop seasoning. Just to give it some flavor. And we'll just brown this up and then we're going to drain the grease off of it after the onions and uh, green peppers cook. I'll be adding those in once this gets browned. Okay, it's getting browned a little bit. And I'm going to start adding in my onions and green peppers. These were grown in our garden. So was the onions. And it's just a couple of green peppers. Um, I did put a little bit of jalapeno peppers in there. And um, I would say about a medium to small onion. And let this cook for a little bit. And you're also going to need a casserole dish of some kind. Okay, um, I couldn't tell you what really what size this is. It's a three quart casserole dish. So it says on the bottom. And you use what you have, you know. Um, if you have one of those big frying pans that you can put in the oven. I would use one of those. Don't forget to drain your your meat and onions and green peppers. Then place them back in the pot. And then we're going to add half of a block of cream cheese. And reserve the other half for later. I'm 
going to melt this cheese down. Okay, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our meat mixture in the bottom of our casserole dish. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is put three eggs Oops. That wouldn't taste very good, would it? Let me wash my hands And I'm just going to add everything together. Um, you're going to need to have a tablespoon of Dijon or some type of brown mustard. And this is the brown mustard I make. I'll be doing a video on that soon. So we'll be doing that. And we're going to be putting in some heavy whipping cream, a half a cup to a cup. use about half of it for right now and then add some cheese I have some cheddar here and then I'm gonna put in the rest of my mozzarella wanted to get rid of that bag and we're going to whisk this all up and you don't have to put the mozzarella in I just did it because I just wanted to get rid of the bag and put more cheddar in it if you like Now we're going to pour this over this. And spread it around. We're 
we're going to put in some of our dill pickles that we made. Yes, I said dill pickle. And you can not add these in if you don't want to. That's all up to you. And you're just going to put it on top of the mixture. Kind of like having a a uh, cheeseburger without without the bun, and we're only gonna put it in the oven long enough just to melt the cheese and cook the egg. Pickles smell so good. Okay. And then what we're going to do we're going to take the rest of our cream cheese and we're going to cut it into chunks and just drop them in the dish anywhere And we're going to take the rest of our cheddar cheese and put it on top. You also can um, put bacon on, which I didn't have any, which is kind of sad. <laughs> but yeah, you're going to put all this cheese on. And preheat your oven 350 and we're gonna put this in and we're gonna bake it for 30 35 minutes okay and I'll bring you back when it's done Okay guys, I just brought it out of the oven, and we're going to let it sit here and rest for about 5-10 minutes, and then we'll cut it in, into it. Okay guys, we're going to cut into this. It smells really good. Of course, the first piece always wants to fall apart. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, this is it. Hi guys, welcome back to a Little Piece of Heaven Farm. And today we're making a chicken vegetable casserole. And uh, let's get into it. First we're going to need some uh, steamed or stewed vegetables frozen and it's going to be a pretty simple recipe we're going to need um, a 16 ounce package these that I have they're 10 so they're small from bird's eye so we're going to put both of these in One jar of chicken gravy. And then we're going to do a teaspoon of sage. And it calls for ground sage, but I have rub sage. I don't think there's a difference. Just maybe the pieces are a little bigger. But this is what I'm using. So I'm going to sprinkle that in here. Give this a stir. Cover it up. And I'm going to snip a couple little bent holes. Okay, they came out of the microwave, and now we're going to add in two cups of shredded chicken. And what I did earlier, I cooked some chicken, and I kind of shredded it. Some pieces I had. Stir this in their bowl. Then we're going to put it back in the microwave for about another five minutes. Okay, the <clears throat> chicken and the stew vegetables came out of the microwave. I'm going to go ahead and melt me. This already smells good. And what the neat thing about this recipe is, it's already mostly done. I mean, you could stop here and eat this like this, but you're gonna miss the best part. This is some of my sliced apples that I canned. Um, the recipe calls for one 
cooking apple, whatever cooking apple you like to use. You're supposed to slice it up and then lay them on. Mmm, they smell good. And we're just going to sprinkle these over the top. Say that juice for later on. And in this little bowl, I have a quarter teaspoon of black pepper and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. And I'm going to sprinkle it over. And then we're going to pop this in a 450 degree oven just to get it bubbly and um, the apples browning a little bit just for about 10 minutes and then she'll be done. And to let you guys know I did drizzle the butter um, <laughs> in this too. That's one thing I forgot. But after you put the black pepper in nutmeg on and drizzle your butter on top and then stick it in the oven okay guys it came out of the oven it's all nice and bubbly smells great can't wait Hi guys welcome back to Little Piece Heaven Farm I'm Cheryl and today we're going to make an enchilada casserole Sounds pretty good, right? Well, let's get into this, and I'll take you over to the stove and, and the counter, and we'll start putting this together. Okay, guys, I have one pound of ground beef, and it's 80-20. Uh, and we're going to start browning this, and we're just going to use um, salt and pepper in this and we're going to get this all browned up I also have oh sorry to kick you in the ankle <laughs> I have my tortillas and we're going to fry these a little bit just brown them a little bit and then I have three cans of this enchilada sauce it's mild um, we don't really do spicy. And I have some of my garden onions. Cheese. And you can put a, a little can of the chilies in if you like. Like I said, we don't really do spicy. These are the uh, jalapenos that we grew in the garden that, that aren't hot. They don't have the heat, but they have a flavor. So I'm going to be adding that to the meat here after a while. But, yeah, let's get into this while this is browning. I'm going to add some salt and pepper. And we'll get all into this. It sounds so good when I found the recipe. I've never made this, but this is what we're going to do. Does it sound good? Why not?
Okay. We'll get this browning and I'll bring you right back when we have that completed. Okay, I'm going to put the jalapenos in. This is where you add your little can of chilies. And we will be draining this. Okay, at this point, take your meat off your burner and we're going to drain it and I'll bring you back. Okay, I'm going to pour in the enchilada sauces into this pan in the back and get this all heated up and ready to go. And in my little pan here, I'm getting this warmed up. And speaking of warmed up, preheat your oven to 375. So we can put our casserole in. And then this is heating up for the tortillas. I have a plate with the uh, paper towels on so we can drain the there's any, a lot of grease something on the burner. Okay. And we're just going to keep doing this until we get our chips tortillas. Um, I would say it all depends on how big your casserole dish is. Um, to you're gonna have at least two layers, so I would say about eight tortillas. So we're going to keep doing this and I'll bring you back. Okay, now guys, we're going to assemble. We're going to put a little bit of our enchilada sauce on the bottom of your, your casserole dish. And like I said, it doesn't matter if it's rectangle, square, however you want to do it. Then we're going to take our tortillas and we're going to run them through the sauce a bit, okay? And put them in the bottom. It's kind of like, it reminds me of like a lasagna. How you do the layer the layering? And remember, we only did a a, a ground a, a one pound of ground beef. You could do more if you like. That's up to you. Like I said, I never made this, so 
it's all new and we're going to take some of our meat and we're just going to sprinkle it down here on the bottom just like I'm doing then a little bit of our onion And our cheese. Pour some sauce. And like I said, you can put as many layers as you want on here. That's up to you. But I saw this recipe. I said I had to try it. And it looks really, really good. So a little bit more of your meat mixture. Some more sauce. of our meat. And I'm going to top it off with a little bit more cheese. Now we're going to pop this into the oven for between 20 and 30 minutes until the cheese is nice and bubbly and golden brown. Okay, so let's get going. Put this guy in. And I'll see you guys back in 30. Stay tuned. Okay guys, I let this uh, relax for about 10-15 minutes so it'd be easier to cut and it doesn't really fall apart. So uh, let's cut a piece out and see what it looks like and maybe taste and uh, yeah, let's do it. Let me get a plate.
Really cheesy. Oh, that looks good. It smells good. Welcome back to the Little Piece Heaven Farm. And today, we're going to be making a noodle bake casserole. Something quick and simple. You can freeze this ahead of time, um, and then pop it in the oven when you get home from work. Um, but I'm making this um, after <laughs> I'm getting off work. So, um, yeah. Let's get into this and, and I'll show you how to make it. Okay guys, I have like two pounds of ground beef uh, in my pan. And then this pot over here, I have my water starting um, to get hot for my noodles. And we're going to use egg noodles. Um, it's a 16 pound package. Well, 16 ounce not 16 pounds, 16, <laughs> 16 ounce package. Oh my god, that would be a lot of pasta, huh? So we're going to brown up our meat. And I'm going to add some onion. And these onions are for my garden. And it's like a <clears throat> like a small, small onion, small to medium. And I'm going to add salt and pepper. For some reason, my pepper guy I don't want to work today. Okay, if he doesn't want to work, I'll get some more pepper. Hold on. on this and brown this. The water is getting hot. I'm going to go ahead and put these in. cans of tomato sauce. Just regular tomato sauce. And it's already been drained. And I'm making this so like 
if some of you don't have any canned goods that you put up this year. So it's pretty simple. And we're going to let this tomato sauce come up to the simmer. And the noodles are almost done. So we get to the next step. Okay, guys. I've drained the noodles off camera. So we're going to put them in this bowl so I can mix them up with our other ingredients. And the sauce came up to simmer. Okay, for what we're going to add in here. If I can get it open. That's the trick to get it open. We're going to add in one 16 ounce package of cottage cheese. And I don't really care for cottage cheese that much. I'm not a big fan of it. But um, it makes this dish really nice. And really, it just makes it cheesier. It You don't even taste it. And we're going to put in a cup. Of sour cream. Let's see. Some salt and pepper. And we're going to mix this all up. Incorporated creamy. already starting to smell pretty good. So Barry and I will be eating on this for a couple days to have leftovers and for lunches too so it's a pretty big casserole. You could cut it in half if you like. Um, feel free to do so or add more ingredients and let me know how you dressed it up and we're going to get our casserole dish and, and we're going to plate it up okay we're going to put 
some of the noodle mixture on the bottom and preheat your oven to 375 if I forgot to tell you. And like I said, you could make these little meals ahead of time. Um, get those little um, aluminum cooking pans. Or if you have like the Pyrex and stuff like that, you can do that too. That way you'll always have meals in the freezer so when you come home from work, and tired and everything, you, you can have that all done. And we're going to get our mixture, meat mixture here. And we're going to add some on. And the meat, you could use like a pound of ground beef and a pound of pork if you like, or maybe Italian sausage. That'd go good. And I'm going to go uh, add cheese to this. I'm using the cheese that I have. Um, So it doesn't spoil. But you can use um, pepper jack, cheddar. Um, I'm using combination. This is cheddar jack cheese. And we're going to put on another layer of noodles. This is just smelling heavenly right now. I can't wait to get it in the oven and get it all nice and bubbly and finished. It's going to take 25 to 30 minutes to get all the cheese melted. And this is called noodle bake. Get a 
all this goodness out of this pan. And more cheese on top. Pretty simple, right guys? Okay, we're going to pop this in the oven to get, get it all nice and bubbly, and I'll bring you back out in about 30 minutes. Okay guys, the timer went off. Let's pull it out and see what it looks like. That looks really, really good. Real good. Let me bring you closer. How's that, guys? Looks really good. We're going to let this rest for 15, 20 minutes. And then we'll cut a piece out. And we'll try it. Okay, guys. We're going to cut a piece out of this. Smells so good. Look at that. Nice layers. Doesn't that look great? Looks awesome, guys. Let's see how it tastes. You know, kind of tastes, reminds me of a lasagna with um, ricotta cheese in it. But, it's really, really, really good. I could eat on this all day long. <laughs> it's really good. And I love how it turned out. All my nice layers. Be great for lunch. For tomorrow, for work. Mm. Yeah, or dinner tomorrow night. Peace Heaven Farm. And today, um, I'm going to whip up a loaded uh, potato casserole. Um, it's my version of it. And it's what you have on hand, mainly. Um, I had some... Uh, yellow potatoes and I quartered them. It was like a little five pound bag. I quartered them, put them in a 400 degree oven and baked them for about 45 minutes. And I fried up some bacon. Oh, about eight to ten slices and I just cut them up. And then in this bowl I have two cups of sour cream and a cup of mayonnaise and cheese of your choice okay it it's whatever you have so what i'm going to do i'm going to start putting the potatoes in 
And I let these cool already, so they're easy to touch. So, we're going to match some of these up. Smash, but you can. And once you get it all matched up, you could leave chunks like I do, and all the ingredients that we're going to be putting in, we'll just stir it in. And then we're going to put it in a casserole dish. Once you put your bacon and your different cheeses in, you can mix it up. And you can put this, pop this in the fridge if you want for just a loaded potato salad. Um, you don't have to bake them like I did in, in the oven. You could boil them, boil your potatoes, just like you would do for a regular potato salad. But I'm going to make like a casserole out of this one. Um, I'm going to get my small casserole dish and we'll start layering it. Okay, we're going to start layering the bottom with our potatoes. And like I said, this comes out really nice for like a potato salad too. Bacon. And I have two different cheeses. I have a sharp cheddar and a pepper jack. So I'm going to put a little bit of pepper jack. some of the sharp cheddar I need the bag open <laughs> and we're going to put this in a 400 degree oven just for a few minutes just to melt the cheese because everything else is already prepared and you can warm up you know your potatoes more be leaving in there a little longer but on a nice summer's day this is really nice as a potato salad but since it's kind of fall and why not have a little bit of touch of summer in a casserole a bit 
more pepper. And some bacon. the bacon pieces up top. And we're going to pop this into a 400 degree oven. Oh, well, for about 10 15 minutes till it's nice and bubbly and the cheese is melted so I'll bring you back when it's ready okay I'm bringing out of the oven I diced up a little bit of green onion and sprinkle that on the top. And we're going to dish some up. Okay. Let's get into this. All the nice layers. Looks really good. Yeah. Loaded potato casserole. And like I said, leave it in there for, in the oven for about 15-20 minutes. And it'll be, it'll be really good. Or you also can just pop it in to your refrigerator and have it cold. So either way it works out. So you have a, a load of cold potato salad or a warm one anyway guys thanks for hanging out with me well i hope you guys enjoyed those videos and i'll see you guys on the next one y'all take care